Hey, Kyle. Yeah, what? Hey, man, we got this great new wine from Bulgaria we want to show you. It's amazing. Oh, really? Oh, tell me a little bit about it. Oh, well, you know, the vineyards are right next door to Sasakaya. So I break out the map and I look and no, they're not. Hey, Kyle, what? Hey, what? We got this great new wine from Bulgari, hot new producer, amazing wine. Uh, it's like a hundred bucks a bottle, but super killer. And the vineyards are right next door in Alaya. Get my map out. Google. No, 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 no. I can't tell you how many wines from the famed Appalachian of Bulgari on the Tuscan coast that I've been presented that all said they were next door to Ornolai and Sasakaya. Every effing producer in Bulgari is next door to Ornolai and Sasakaya. Not. Well, today, kids, we have the one that actually is next door to Sasakaya and Ornolai. And it's because it was there before they were. So they're next door to them. Capiche? <laughs> Castello di Bulgari. Castello di Bulgari. So this is a, there was like actually friggin' castle. Like, um, I forget how old, like 1700s? Something like that. Uh, the Castello di Bulgari was created and the family is a multi-generational family and they're pretty low key. You know, as you, uh, anybody seen some pictures or been to Bulgari, you know, there's the, the, the 29 of Bulgari, right? Is this east-west road called the, uh, and it runs along the Viale dei Cipressi, right? Which is the, the cypress trees. You see that iconic photo of, of this road and all the cypress trees lined along at it? Well, on the beach side of the Viale dei Cipressi, closest to the water, you'll see the winery of Sasakaya. They got a good lunch place, etc. good hang, right? And then as you go down the road, at the end of the road is the Castello di Bulgari. So they really are next door neighbors. And you know, they kind of have the same mojo, right? Cabernet, let's talk Cabernet. Cabernet's king with these guys, as it should be. Cabernet grows beautifully in this section of Bulgari on the Tuscan coast. And the Cabernet here is wonderful, fragrant, full-bodied, distinctly Italian, super flavorful, and uh, and that's what this wine is. So, you know, the Castello di Bulgari, fortunately, thank you, they only make two wines. They make a more upscale estate bottling, a little fancier schmancier, and then they make this wine, Varvara. And the Varvara, we're fortunate enough that uh, this wine is in the great 2021 vintage, which as with Tuscany interior, County Classico, et cetera, 21 is a hell of a year. These pinpoint, um, perfectly balanced, generously fruited, perfectly structured wines that uh, one of the greatest vintages we've ever tasted from Tuscany. So this is the 21 Varvara from Castello di Bulgari, Ornolai and Sasakai's actual next door neighbor, the blend. The balance, uh, the majority here, as it should be, 55% Cabernet Sauvignon, a good chunk of Merlot, about a quarter Merlot, and then that's peppered out with some Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. So you get the whole, you get the whole range going on here. They're actually a small property. Uh, when you look at the sellers and you, you see how much wine they produce, they're smaller than either of their neighbors, quite honestly. So even though they were maybe there before, um, they're actually a bit smaller. And I think part of that has to do with the replanting, right? Since these guys already had sticks to the ground for a long time, but think about it. If you had it first, what were you planting on along the Tuscan coast when nobody else had planted anything yet? What do you think? Hmm, probably Tuscan varieties, right? So they had planted probably like Sangiovese, Caneolo, Malvasia, et cetera, et cetera, like a Chianti on the coast. But they soon discovered later, thanks to, thank you to Sasakai and Ornolat, that um, Sangiovese isn't real happy here. The thinner skins don't react well to the salt in the air and the soils. And you got some real issues with producing world-class Sangiovese on the coast. Accordingly, they ripped everything out in the mid nineties and went to the Bordeaux varieties. So they actually have less vineyard working for them than, than their neighbors do. But what vineyards they are, right? This is high rent district, man. This is a serious neighborhood. Mm, just the um, purple flowers. Uh, there's almost like a real Margoe thing happening here with this wine today, which is not uncommon for this neck of the woods. But you're already smelling a wine that's balanced. Uh, everything just seems in its perfect place without even drinking it, but. Mm. There it is. Super sweet center with these wines. But the frame is perfect. It's tannic, but not too tannic. The acids are prevalent, but perfectly meshed into the wine. Shockingly good year. And it's a vintage that 
these wines, they make you want to drink more of them. And I love that type of year. Some years are a bit like maybe 15 or these years that are too rich, the wines are a bit like, you know, they get a bit heavy, even though they're, they're really rich and yummy. And some years the wines are a bit austere, right? Not here, everything here is just right. Um, terrific pricing on this. One of the greatest deals on a Bulgari Red we have in the store. Like I said earlier, it's a high rent district. Everything's creeping in that triple digit range now, or trying to. And uh, this wine, fortunately, is not that. Um, who was there first? Who did it first? These guys. Castel di Bulgari Varra 21. Brilliant, brilliant wine.